assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my voice is clear right yes okay inshallah a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wahlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli allahumma rabbana zidna ilma this is our uh, meeting that we do with parents every month uh, this time we invited some everybody whoever wants to join they can come and join uh, so we can discuss some things inshallah um anyone knows what is the hadith of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that when the jal comes what are we supposed to do you don't need to give me the whole hadith but any uh, what's the concept when the jal comes what are we supposed to do go fight we have to hide hide yes. go to the mountains you hide you prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you don't try to encounter you don't try to be a hero in any other words the best is that you and you you save yourself and your your family um if you look closely and honestly without uh, emotions or emotionless there are two kind of people one are very emotional one are not emotional at all and they don't care unfortunately but if you see the realities then as a jamaat this is the order of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a jamaat we cannot deal with the jal and now let's look at the quickly look at the world's um, situation that whatever is happening these days the world is in the hands of the leaders who have mental illnesses most of them and later on maybe you can sit down in this inshallah this week we will give our students homework they will be collecting the flags of muslim countries and just look and i'm not only talking about muslim countries i'm talking about every country most of them they have the lead, the world leaders they have uh, delusions they are disorganized they have they have uh, hallucinations just today someone shared the tweet about biden and you can see that he is the president of the most strong country and he is uh, making up stuff because right after his speech uh, the white house came and they said no they, we don't have information about this and he's just uh, saying that so this gives you an idea that um, what kind of people we are dealing here with we have a new crime spot stopper here in our city i just um uh, saw the i got the news yesterday um i know him because i've been living in niagara falls for very long right so i know this person uh, uh working with children almost you know everyone all the muslims he's a muslim um he has uh, he is a uh, it's a very hard word for me to pronounce <clears throat> he has schizophrenia so he has this mental illness he has adhd um we all are aware of this uh, he is fighting with almost everyone he every other day he's at the police station uh, taking a complaint about one or another um he's in front of the mayor's office every other day at least twice a week Uh, because he wants this and he wants that he has sued the local uh, businesses uh, he has mental illness there is no doubt uh, he's banned from one of the masjid um, and he has been chosen to be the crime stopper of the town and my first thought was why they know why would they pick him and then i thought and i understood that actually the world is in these kind of people's hands these are the people who are making the decisions he is going to take any complaint about anyone and uh, they will have to deal with that person they will have to go and uh, because he he's bringing it they are not making they did not make him a fake stop crime you understand he has this power even though they know he has many other problems and i don't want to talk about that but this is what we are dealing with 
what would you do if you have a crime stopper, this kind of crime spotter in your community? So we had a meeting yesterday and we have decided to avoid him. To avoid him. Because it doesn't matter how good you are to him, he is going to think negative about you at one point or another. So to avoid him. And wow, right? You cannot deal with them. You have to hide. You have to avoid him. Obviously, we are not going to go and hide in the mountains. We will ignore him. Um, every other day, we have new fitness coming up. Last month, we were dealing with Komilut uh, sins. And today, we have another problem. And Prophet Muhammad wasallam said that there will be time. The, the fitness will be falling like the beads. So, yes, it is about the major signs. Their hadith is about the major signs. But uh, the, all the minor signs are here. Uh, when we were young and the girls started to wear jeans, I don't know where you were and what is your experience. Um, I heard our grandparents and parents saying, uh, this, there is a hadith that the girls will dress up like boys. Look at this, that today. If our grandparents see what is happening today, that was nothing compared to what is happening today. They can take anyone's child and they can turn his sex without even parents knowing. That was nothing. Wearing jeans was nothing, right? So um, I have a question for you guys and you guys are going to talk to me okay i don't i'm this class is not for the teenagers you all but this this is why we are doing it live i have a question um do you think that whatever is happening whatever why ever whatever reason you are here whatever is bothering you whatever fitna is there is this going to stop here no 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 is it going to reverse? Is it going to go back to better, better place? Don't think so. Eventually, no. not as long as we're alive. Yes, yeah. talking about us, right? Yes. Us in next year or three years or you know, in a few no. months. Yes, so. What is the solution that Prophet Muhammad Wasallam gave us? Hmm? Keep tight to your um, deen. Lee. Right. With your hands. If not, at least consider as... If that's for your iman. That is to judge your right. iman. But the solution, we the solution that Prophet Muhammad Wasallam gave us is flee. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about that in the beginning, right? Yeah. Now, which surah gives us the solution? Which surah of the Quran gives us the solution? Surah al Kahaf. The Biyanim Likulli Shay. Allah SWT says, I have explained everything. Allah SWT has, has told us the, the Quran gives us uh, or explains everything then how is it possible that whatever is happening today is not explained in the Quran? Hmm. Quran has given a solution for everything. How is that possible that we are so sad and lost today because we don't know what to do? Is it possible? Obviously not, right? There must be a solution and the solution is in the Quran. And yes, you're right. Solution is in Surah Al-Kahf. Now, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi told us to recite Surah Al-Kahf on Friday and we all make posts and, you know, we are very, we are sharing the posts and we, we are reciting the Surah Al-Kahf. Is that how we are supposed to, is that going to give us the solution, the way that we just recite? No. So the solution is there. Now, just think about it. We are in a, such a big trouble. We are so worried. We cannot sleep. We are suffering. We are bleeding. And we have the solution, we have the medicine. Only problem is it is in another language. 
we don't understand so we'll just read it kiss it and put it away or we're going to take it to somebody who can explain it to us we're going to google it we're going to try to translate it and we're going to try to follow and take the medicine on time in surah al kahf allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in very detail uh, tells us the encounter of musa alayhi salam and khizr Khizr was someone who was given the wisdom and very special knowledge. That's what we learn in Surah Al-Kahf. Milladun ka Sultan and Nasira. And what was that special knowledge? What was that wisdom? That he could see what's coming next. Khizr Islam was given this power. He could see what's coming next. So when we read that surah, when we learn, then we will have that wisdom. We will have that furqan. That whatever is happening, we understand and we know that what is coming next. Yes, it is very important, Khadija, that we find the solutions to help. Now, let's move on to um, the next part. And that is that... Uh, we have a body, right? We our, our students now, our kids know, we have body that we can see outer, this outer shell, and then we have soul. Now our body, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that people who uh, have disease or the body is sick, right? They cannot see, they cannot hear, and they cannot speak. That's the body. So when the body cannot see, what do we say? The eyes don't have what? In Arabic, what would we say? The eyes don't have what? Noor. Right? Light. Noor. Now the soul has ears. Soul have eyes. When the soul cannot see, what does soul don't have? Noor. Correct? Yeah. So where is the noor of the soul? Can you go to a doctor and you can get maybe medicine or drops or uh, surgery and you can get your um, eyesight of your soul, the noor of your soul back? No. 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 So where are we going to go to get that noor? Because noor is not sold in the supermarkets. Quran. The Quran. Well the Quran. Yeah, Quran and we all know we just don't want to say it loud that time is coming these fitness are about to enter in our houses we all know that yep. and you know when uh, uh, let's let we'll talk about that in a bit but yes so the noor is not in media noor is not in the news Noor is not on Twitter. Noor is not there. Noor is there in your book, in your house, in your hands. Remember about the social media and the news. You are only seeing what they want to feed you. You're only seeing what they want you to see. Same with your children. What my children what comes on their TikTok, it doesn't come on my TikTok. This is how it is being censored from me because if I know what they're watching, I will tell them this is wrong. I'll try to erase that. So it doesn't even come on my TikTok. We have checked. And you know that. So, Where's the solution? Let's talk about that. Solution is dua. Yes, Samar. Samra, you're right. Solution is dua. You know, I don't know how many of you speak Urdu, but we say in Urdu, Ab dawa ki nahi, dua ki hai. that the medicine, the doctor says medicine is not going to work now. Pray for the patient. These are the realities. We should be aware of them. We know, but we are just 
We're just closing our eyes. So it shall pass. That's what we have. Um, so dua. It is time to make dua now. And the first one is Noor. We have to give our soul its light back. Our soul is deprived from Noor. Just imagine if you cover your both eyes for next 48 hours, cover it with the dark um, cloth or circle, something you cannot see for next 48 hours. Now, we, inshallah, individually, we will work on our Quran, inshallah, and we will make more dua. But let's move on to something that we have. Uh, you know how I said that there um that you and i have the resources that we can use to at least save our future that the fitnas are going to enter our houses there is no doubt about that and uh, nobody will come to help you we are here for reality check today nobody will come to help you are we going to going to help someone today are we doing something what can we do Right? No one will be there for you when the fitna enters your doors. And if somebody does feel pain for you, what will they do? <laughs> what are we doing? Make dua and then satisfy. Sleep. Have a good sleep that I did pray to Nafulin. I It was so sad. This... Uh, post circulating that you recite this and then you recite that and then you recite this and this none of it is musnoon and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will um, free first thing will be free and I, I said yeah okay that's good you know what we're done wow such a good ummah right we have a solution you recite it 10 times I recite it 10 times and we'll have the holy land back this is what is going to happen when it is your turn because your turn will come we know this i'm not making a prediction we know this prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us you said in the beginning go to the mountains why did he tell us when the, the, the time come we will have to go to the mountains yes we don't have to go to the mountains today you know my biggest regret for myself and you and all of the ummah is that we moved here we moved to the west we made a big mistake i never thought like that People used to say, and I never thought like that. But today, I agree. Because I can hear the footsteps at my door. We have um, Muslim uh, influencers. And, you know, some kids, they're really good in marketing. So they have different accounts where maybe they are not even, uh, they are not showing themselves Maybe they are selling a product or maybe they are just making some other content. And not one, not two. So many of the students, they they came back to me uh, yesterday and they told me that um, yeah, Yaqub's sons, right? I'm going to use code words so that our thing is not censored, are approaching them and they're um, offering them big money if they help spread the propaganda. And it was so heartbreaking. You know, a few days back, I would say it's so cute because that's the language I use. I don't use the language heartbreaking. But it was that one of them said that, Auntie, we want to complain about them because they can go on social media and they can show the texts, right? But we are afraid. And these kids here were never afraid. They can hear that too. They are dying today. What are we doing? 
they are alone. So what can we do? At least we can save our own kids. Right? How? Let's plan. Today, I am putting the burden on your shoulders. You know how usually, or almost all the time I tell you, they leave it, leave it on me, leave it on me. Now, I am begging you that I need your help. Because from now on, I can't do this alone. For the last three centuries, we have been told and taught five pillars of Islam. You know what pillar is? Pillars have no, pillars are only pillars. Look at this building, only pillars. Imagine there is no roof. For the last three centuries, we have been only building the pillars. We did not put roof on our heads. What a woman, right? All right, let's move on. Let's talk about children and their ages and what are you going to do, inshallah. Let's talk about the youngest one, okay? For the first... Um, for... Give me one second, okay? I did write down something, so... Okay, let's uh, let's talk about uh, some some other things first, and then we'll move on to the children. You know, um, for sure, for from five to ten year is the time that it is for you and your child. Leave everything. If you have a child under the age of five to ten years old, that is your very first priority. More than cooking delicious food and bringing so much money in the house. And where are fathers? Because the presence of fathers is missing. What is Quran? Is there a surah in the Quran where it's named on a mother other than Maryam? Because he was a, a mother of a miraculous baby. But if the, is there? I, I don't think so. But is there uh, any father mentioned in the Quran? Surah Luqman. Luqman. Luqman was a father. Why is he mentioned? He's talking to his son. He's raising his son. He's giving advice to his son. Luqman and his son. Luqman as a father. And then Yaqub as a father. The most beautiful surah. Those mushtande, it says my, in our language, that those thugs, those killers, they come, they come back to him and they tell him that we kill your son. And what they, he doesn't say, liars, be quiet, shut up. I'm going to fix you. Because now his children are grown up. So what does he say? Sabrun Jameel did not say a word. What happens in our houses? When the son is grown up, there are more fights. The father is now threatened. He feels threatened, unfortunately, from his own son. Now he is showing his manhood. And when there was time to show his manhood, he was busy. What was he doing? He was making money. He was going to work. He had a business. He would come home, eat and drink tea, watch TV and sleep. On the other hand, your child, he has a friend whose father, who's, who, they're not Muslim. What is What are their father doing? Oh, my dad took me for archery. We go for archery. We go for swimming. We go for fishing. We, my father goes for hunting. My father was at gym. My father was bicycling. And I come home and my father is sitting on the couch watching news. Like he has to go and conquer the world. So he needs to know everything. Our fathers are unfortunately 
did not play their role. Did your husband teach your child how to do horse riding? If one person here, I, I would say that is the win for today. You know, when kids slip, a boy slips, boss. Let's, let's talk about boys. When a boy slips, what does the mother say? Hmm? Your maybe seven years old child slips from the stairs. What are you going to say? Don't cry, you are a boy. You're going to run. You're going to run to him, no? It's instinct. Mother's instinct. Doesn't matter how strong you are. You're going to be worried. And if the dad is sitting there, he'll say, leave it. He's going to be fine. It's not a problem. There is a baseball champion. I don't know the name. He said, once I lost the game, I come home. My mother says, it's okay, honey. It's fine. Don't worry. Because I was very worried. My father, he kicked me out of the house. He said, get out of my house till you win. He's a baseball champion today. He says, I am this because my father was rough to me. But you know what? I will, tell, I will say one more thing. Unfortunately, mothers today, we don't let them to be men up either. We don't like men husbands. We like the house cats. So if they are tough with our sons, we don't like that. And we don't let them. And then, you know, they're already so exhausted. I'm not saying this is all, all the time this is the case, but most of the time that is problem too. Now, the mothers. Let's look at the Muslim mother. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh my God, I'm dying. I worked all day. And then I'm on my WhatsApp. I'm on my TikTok. I'm so busy. I don't have time. Kids are these days talking, 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 and mothers don't have time. We tell them to go sit in your room, go watch this. We, play, we put things on for them because we're exhausted. On the other hand, if there is another mom, a non-Muslim mom, what is she doing? She has a diet. She's walk, going for walks. She's going to gym. She's active. She's happy. She's nicely dressed. She's smiling at her children. What is the what is the picture that comes to your mind when you think about a morning in the white white household? I should say. So, yes, we are worried, and yes, we have to save our own families, but we have to change too. We have to be better too. We are the one who who lost it, not our kids. Whatever wherever we are today, it's because of you and me and our parents. And our grandparents, not our kids. But we want them to miraculously become Saad bin Abi Waqas and Talha bin Abi Raida. How is that going to happen? They don't even have that in their genes. We will, we will have to work so hard. So hard. And uh, organized. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give us responsibility, mothers, to make money, to bring the food at the table, unless it's some special uh, situation. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us responsibility to raise them. Somebody who you could be proudly sent today and say, I did my part. Allah, I am from us. None of us did that. None of us. Now, let's move on. For the, We have to prepare. We have to prepare because um, things are coming. It is going to happen. It is happening. Actually, it has started to happen. And as I said, all we have is our own children. We do not have, come, remember that, no Umar is going to come to save us. No Ali is going to come to save us. No Urtugal is going to come to save us. We are the members of the ummas of beggars.
keep your children close to yourself. This is all you have left. This is only hope. This is the only treasure that we have left. Keep them closer. Work on their noor from now on. Because remember, the noor is not sold in the supermarkets. When they become doctors, when they become successful businessmen, when they have so much money, they will still be Muslim. Sometimes they change their names and they are still Muslims. This is not, nothing is going to change this fact that they are part of this now. And no money is going to help them buy that noor. So first, let's talk about five years old and youngers. They say five years old and younger treat them like kings. How? Not just only giving them so much love and pamper and fulfilling their desires, but also calling them what you want them to be. In some cultures, they call... Um, little boy is Baba. And I used to think, why? And they call them with so much respect. One of uh, my students was telling me that his friend's mom, she used to call him sir when he was young because she wanted him to become, you know, a sir. So what are we going for the younger ones? We are going to treat them like kings. We are going to give them respect and love. Remember that, not just the love, respect and love we will connect them with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala add allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their lives in every sentence possible because till five years old they adore you they think that whatever you say is the reality of the life if there is a scientist telling them something about science and you tell them something they're going to believe you they're not going to believe uh they don't have tiktok accounts they don't have social media accounts. You are their God. So use that power and connect them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Attach them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so closely that in the rest of their lives, they cannot detach from that. Inshallah. You guys talk now. Come up, tell me if you have five years old and what's your plan or if you have any questions. Five and younger, babies. We have, mashallah, babies in Sunday camp. Two baby, new babies are born last month. So, right, um, so. This is a camp. Uh, kids are really um, like curious and they want to know like what is the real story and um, why we cannot help like they are taking uh, names of every single country who could help so um, I was wondering like to what extent we should be telling them because in my case like um, I have seen my son tossing on the bed he was not able to like absorb all what's happening and um, if we really tell them the real picture um of the kids there i don't know like how much they could absorb and uh like uh how much it will affect their mental health at this stage so can you please guide us like what uh up to what extent we should tell them because um they are just watching the news and um i'm just showing them few things that are not uh how old is on... he how old is he uh he's uh nine yeah okay well, I'm going to talk about nine years old in a minute, okay? They also, like, I have a nine and a six, so I have my, my daughter is, like, six, but she's asking so many questions. So, like, my husband is saying, don't give them emotional trauma. Mm -hmm. They can handle this all because we are not able to handle this, so how they can, so. Let's talk about uh, five years and younger, and then, inshallah, we are going to move on to those. Okay, inshallah. Yes, Samra? <clears throat> Actually, we don't watch a lot of TV, so my children are not into, they're not asking me a lot of questions, but I I have 
decided that this Saturday afternoon, inshallah, we will be having, you know, my children and some children for the neighborhood. We, I think we should be working on instilling love for Palestine first, instilling love for the land of the prophets. So that is what uh, I believe should be done. First and foremost, before telling them, because they cannot go out, they cannot fight with everyone. They are so small. Uh, how old is your child? Mine is, uh, one is eight years old. Mm -hmm. And a second is five. And then I have two years old. Okay, so we today, right now, at this point, I've, I'm not talking about uh, Aksa. I'm talking about your child problem with us is that we focus on one problem and we don't look at the entire picture we are talking about our how we are going to raise them so that these fitness are not stopping you can uh, my... so sorry yes go ahead samra uh, my uh, eight year old we have started uh, no, with, I, with the no, meanings no, no. of uh, surahs Yes, you know, we so. have completed one surah Fatiha, then Nas, and mm. then Fala. And okay. then we also uh, make some you know crafts and activities mm -hmm. relating to the surah, so that the concept which is there in the surah it gets cleared. And they just you know she has actually learned that the surah of Nas and Fala they are sort of a fortress, and they are going to save us Samra, from Samra, give me everything. One. Samra, give me one second. Sorry. I uh, is there someone who is with me? Did you guys understand that what I'm talking about? Anyone who can re say what I said uh, in the last few sentences? See, now I need a Aslam alaikum. Um, I think, Sister Zakia, you are trying to find the root cause of all the fitna we are here at. Like, you know, the basic cause we came to this place where we are facing all these fitnas and what to do now, because yes. now we cannot go back and fix them. So for this situation, what prophets had to do? Yes, thank you. So, so And you also were talking about uh, building the Noor in our children. Uh, the connection yes. needs to be stronger. Um, no. Yes, thank you, Naz. Amna and Samra. Um, Am Amna, Amna asked a, a good question. Inshallah, we are going to go there too. And Samra, you are right. What you're doing, mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in your efforts. And that's good that you're spending time with them and you're teaching them the Quran. And we are going to right now because we are on, this is a reality, guys, wake up. We are Stepping into that stage where you only have to take care of your own family, your own children. Teaching your child about Aqsa or not teaching your child about Aqsa is a very different topic. When Aqsa comes to your house, is your child ready to handle that? And I'm not scared. You know, I never talk negative. You guys, I, I think I know myself. I know I'm the most positive person. I think whoever I see. I don't know if you agree with me or not. But now the kids are not here. I'm talking to you. We have to focus on them. And when I said if they are younger than five years old, Niloli's mom is here? Or it was Ibrahim's mom? Yes, I'm here. Yes. Okay. So, what do you understand, Neoli's mom? How do you have to, what do you have to do with Neoli and the babies? Well, um, I was already planning that he's going to be homeschooled because I, I feel like I have more control over what he's learning and, and um, mm -hmm. taking him to mosque. And I already have a lot of sisters that are good influences, and you know, we work together to keep our kids on the right paths and, and then doing a lot of encouragement, teaching him about Allah all the time. When he asked me questions, I always direct it to Allah. And I mean, from this class, he's, he's, he'll talk a whole, the other day he does go to daycare. So we are planning not to take him to daycare anymore because it is more, you know, teaching about Halloween and all that stuff, which I already told him we don't celebrate. Mm. And he'll come home and he'll be like, 
oh, I told I told my teacher that I believe in Allah and that my friend this believes in Allah and he believes in Allah and we all believe in Allah. <laughs> That's the answer. This is what I just, this is what I, I want everybody to understand. If your child is younger than five years old, spend as much time you can with them. That's if you're, she's homeschooling them. That's the best scenario. If you can't, still, they should be your first priority. Spend as much time you can with them. And whatever question is, whatever conversation is, whatever situation is, bring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the equation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be added into their every sentence. Yeah, but in order to do that, we need to be knowledgeable ourselves. So we need five to, I need to put, no, fix no. a few things about myself. Yeah, but your child, children are grown up now. So you do. Yeah, I've got grown up children, but still I feel like yes. I don't have the enough knowledge if my children ask me something. So my yes. first priority is to fix that. But we are talking about five years old here, right? five years old, when you have your grandkids, you will be able to answer their uh, questions even without a lot of knowledge. Who made the sky? Allah. Oh my God. You. Oh, okay. You get hurt. Let's ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fix it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can fix it right now. You want a toy? Let's ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he can give us the toy. You like peanut butter? Thank Allah. Thank you Allah for making peanut butter for us. So Allah in every sentence. And because they are younger. Now, if you do the same thing with 10 years old and you st you want to start that experiment today, please don't. They're going to stop talking to you. And if you do that with a teenager, oh, you're gone. Because they'll say, what's wrong with her? She's adding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My, my, I did this with my kids. Now they're grown up. And now if I add, still, if I add a hadith or an ayah, in uh, whatever they are telling me if because I'm like oh my god there is a hadith about that but I have to be quiet because it, I mean I know if I start doing it they will stop talking to me but we will talk about that in a bit so five years old and younger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be their best friend and you are the the source you are the source to connect them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cool should we move on? Next one is hard. Next one, you're not going to like it. So should we move on to next one? Or if any, any questions about this, ask me now. No? Yes, go ahead, honey. Farha. Hi, yes. Um, this is Ms. Amal's mom. So I... um. I put my kids in the Catholic school, you know, like he's six years old and Minahil is five. Mm -hmm. So I put them in the Catholic school because of this whole, you know, scenario of the LGBT, whatever going on in <clears throat> public schools. And mm -hmm. I thought over there, you know, it'll be better and whatever. Mm -hmm. But what happened was um, because he was going, Muzammal specifically, he was going to Sunnah camp. Mm -hmm. And then in the school, Catholic school, like especially that young age, I wasn't really aware, but they really try to instill, you know, talks about Jesus and do a morning prayer every day and stuff like that. And as soon as they come to class, the first thing they have to do is go and pray to Jesus and everything. I kind of wasn't prepared for that. So I didn't prepare my children. And then Muzammal would um, talk in class and say, no, Jesus is not God. Allah is God and stuff like that. And everything, whenever they would say Jesus, and he would just talk about Allah. He said, no, like my mom said, Allah is the God. Allah made this. Allah th did that. Mm -hmm. And he was just basically, whatever he learned, right? He was just telling that to other people. Like, he wasn't really aware that people have other gods and stuff. Yeah. So, um, then I just got confused how to deal with this whole situation because I feel like Towards the end, like, a lot of people alienated him in school. Like, he didn't have friends. Because mm -hmm. I guess, you know how, like, the mothers talk and everything? Mm -hmm. They kind of thought that I sent my child there for preaching mm -hmm. or something. Because he would really mention, you know, a lot, a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And then I felt really bad, like, really guilty as a mother. He, he always used to say, Mama, why did you send me to school? They, send, they talk about Jesus. Jesus is not my God and stuff like that. So now, like, I shifted him again to a public school. I, I mean, 
At this stage, I'm just confused. I hope I wish that you talk to me before you send him to public school. Oh. <laughs> because uh, uh, Muzammil is very special, mashallah. He is that. You know how we need those. Uh, I told you this before too, right? I think we need those alpha men. We are going to. I didn't want to put too much pressure on fathers because then we are going to go home and fight with them that it's all your fault, whatever is happening in Masjid Aqsa mm -hmm. because of you. So poor husbands are going to be grilled. But unfortunately, the alpha male, male are missing in Ummah. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he is, you You can save it. You know, for, for most of the kids, we have to work on them and we have to make them. For Muzammil, you either preserve him or you let him go waste. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with him. Mm -hmm. Don't overprotect him. And we're going to go move on to that. He's what, How old is he? Eight, right? No, now he's six. Oh, he's six. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, we could have talked to him and we could have given him some wisdom that how to talk, but removing him is not sending a good message for him. So inshallah, let's talk about that uh, uh, this Saturday in the masjid, okay? Sure. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Okay, inshallah. Now let's move on to five to 10 years old. And the word I will use, you might not like it. Now they are your slaves. Treat them as they are your slaves. Give strict directions, have strict guidance. Now you can tell them whatever you want them to do. Remember, whatever you're doing with them when they are five to 10 years old, this is what you're gonna get when they are 25 years old and older. So you are working on a product when they are five to 10 years old, which you will receive back when they are 25 years old. You understand? Now, um, talking about trauma and all those things, look, everybody has, I don't want to give too much. Uh, I don't want to talk about that too much. I told my kids everything that was going on. I don't, uh, gosh, I have a good example, but I can't share it with you. Uh, let me think. Oh, my brain is blocking now. Give me, I was relying on sheet on regime. Guys, please don't overprotect them. That's all I can say. Amna, you are afraid that your child, Amna, I can say that to you. I cannot say that to anybody else. Right? You're afraid, Amna, that your child is going to go to trauma and those are children who are facing it. They are not your children. This is yes, why. That, that, that's what I think. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. This is why one by one we are being killed. One by one. Yes. I want to protect, you know, uh, let me try to make a fake story. It's so, so hard to tell me fake stories. <laughs> okay, so there are two friends, okay, same age, like uh, Musab, nine years old. One of their one of the friend's father died. They're best friends. They hang out all the time. They learn together. They go to masjid together, everything together. One of boy's father died. That boy was very well prepared. Wallahi, there was no sickness in the family. They didn't know somebody's going to die. It was perfect, healthy family. But the father died all of a sudden. Two months illness. The mother from very young age was preparing them. Death is something. When mommy dies, you're going to do this. When daddy dies, you're going to do that. The kids were not shocked. Yes, it was hard. Obviously, it is hard. It was hard for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Death is something which is hard. But they didn't go to depression. The other boy who's Dad was protecting them. You know, he didn't let the kids go to this, the best friend. He didn't let him go to the funeral. He didn't let him go to the graveyard because he thought his son would go to trauma. Whatever is happening with us today, it is happening because of these reasons. We are very, very self-centered and we are chickens. Uh, we want to protect our children from what? What they are going to face tomorrow? We we all agree that this is coming. Read the comments that people are making. Listen to the speeches carefully. If you don't see it, your soul is blind. 
your soul needs surgery and you're the only one who can do that surgery. If your husband cannot see it, the wisdom is missing. The Furqan is missing. When a 14-year-old child tells me, oh, this is never going to happen here because it's very peaceful, I understand. But if you tell me that, we are doomed anyways. So it's not going to make any difference if you, you're acting like a teenager too. But come back to our kids. Five to 10 years, make strict schedules. Don't say he's too young. Um, he cannot do that. They are not too young. Look what schools are teaching them. Why schools doesn't, why the schools don't think that they are too young? Why they are teaching them about everything? The things that you I, and I learned after we got married, they already know. How? Why? They didn't go to trauma, did they? There is a way that you tell them what's happening and tell them when they ask why we are not helping them, tell them we were losers. Honey, your parents were losers. Your grandparents were losers. This is the truth. Our generations were very self-centered. Tell them we were very self-centered. We only cared about uh, our families and our children. Our parents, they wanted to leave a lot of money for us. They wanted us to go to uh, schools. They wanted us to get degrees. They didn't care about anybody else. And you know, whenever there was a bombing in the, any Muslim country, the most we did was we collected some money and sent there and we felt better. Tell, read, you need, like Nas said, we need information. Read why World War First, first uh, uh, War happened. Why second? What did we lose? What did we lose in that? What happened to the Khilafat Usmania? What were the terms? I can't teach them everything online. That's why in the beginning I said, now I need your help. You have to get that information. You have to read. It's why only focusing on Palestine? Why not Yemen? We lost everything. We didn't just leave, leave Palestine, lose Palestine. This is an, another 911. If you think that uh, we are... Yeah, we lost uh, um, uh, that time. Yes, we lost Ottoman. We lost, and that time we lost everything. We we didn't need uh, passports to go to each other's country. We had one country. We were we had one Khilafa. We were one Ummah. And then we will talk about the teens. If you don't have any questions or comments, come on. We are talking. I'm not. I'm sorry if I am emotional today. But I'm not. I'm angry at myself. Believe me, I, I'm angry at myself. I'm not angry at you. Assalamu alaikum. Um, sorry, yes. I think I share your frustration, the anxiety, the for me it's it's throwing my whole mood, made me a bit depressed. Um just to see and not know where to prioritize or what to do. So mm -hmm. I definitely resonate with the whole um teaching the child and being disciplined. So I appreciate that advice. But then sometimes I'm at a loss for what to prioritize. Like, alhamdulillah, I have the privilege of homeschooling her. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, there's a lot of Quran, Tawheed, and it feels like to her also everything's Islam, Islam, Islam. And then also trying to get that balance of not cracking her. Yeah. Um, So that plays on my mind. But then also, how do you not become overwhelmed? Like I, as a parent or a child, as the parent, like I'm not worried about the child because well, it's a double factor. My understanding is, the anxiety of the parent mirrors is the anxiety of the child is directly con correlated to the anxiety of the parent. So mm -hmm. if as a parent you appreciate the situation, you're confident in the situation, which is why for the sister whose son, who mashallah is, um, proud to say that he's Muslim. Wallahi, mm -hmm. it's such mm -hmm. a blessing because the children, they're on the fitra and we, the parents, and I saw that even in my generation with my parents, they kill astaghfirullah, they kill the iman, they kill the confidence in the deen. Mm -hmm. And then that's where the child or the iman just becomes a shell and mm -hmm. it's hollow. Whereas when they've got that confidence and my daughter's the same as well, she'll be correcting the kids. And yes, she did have... <laughs> 
a lot of bullying because of it. But alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I suppose now she's homeschooled, alhamdulillah. So that's not a solution for everybody. But um, how do we, like, okay, for me, I always thought, okay, Islamic history, because I never knew it. So mm. the more I'm studying it, the more I'm like, subhanAllah, there is a repetition here. Mm. And there is a pattern. And it's true, what somebody said, Izza comes with, and that's part of the problem. We mm. don't practice the religion the way we should. Mm. So that's why victory and ease hasn't come so quickly. Mm. And yes, it will eventually come, but a lot of circumstances are going to occur before it comes. So I don't even call it sacrifice because what's happening right now in Azifa, we are not making sacrifices. We are being butchered. We are being killed. We are being, uh, uh, you know, suppressed. So this, we are, th this is very good point, right? You say sacrifices. Sacrifices when we are doing something. We are not even doing something and we are still being being killed sure. so it, either way we are going to suffer so why not suffer as a brave man like here uh farha her son mashallah he's so brave but she wants him to be chicken right and that's not just her we all because we think this is how they're going to be saved so i agree with you yes Nazifa, the keep... so how do you how do you get so exactly so my question is then what do i need to teach my child to be brave and also along the journey i have to teach myself to be brave so i know i need to understand about the Khulafat rashidun i need to understand the islamic history i need to also keep in mind the prophets and the things that they've been because i told my daughter i was like i think i mentioned that all oh, prophet muhammad had a really hard life you know his life was hard and she and she resonated with that like oh, you know and I'm like, yeah, but that, that's the point of this life. It's going to be hard. We want Jannah. But at the same time, to keep that morale going, how do you, I don't know, how do you strike the balance? What do you prioritize to teach the child? And with the strictness, yeah, I don't know. What is the extent? You know, yeah, I'm sorry, I how old was he? She's seven now. Okay. So, uh, I, what, what I do with myself, with my, what I did with my kids and what I do with my students is I am very firm believer that when you teach them the seat of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the companions so when they see them there is no way that they are they, they, this just, just adopt for some reason in this age that your daughter is mashallah they adopt their characteristics so see you're giving them role models why you think that they are adding the Qomi Lut, the Amal and flags and everything in kids' cartoons and in their movies and because they adopt from them, right? So when we are giving them the role models and for, for extra layer that I expect from parents from now on is that they will read the Islamic empires, their history, especially before the fall and then the fall because our kids need to learn from there. This is where we started to lose, right? This is where we started to lose. And after that, we were we are shot with tranquilizers. We're just sleeping. We're doing whatever they want us to do. We don't, I, you, we didn't know the problems, right? That how it started and what's happening. We didn't know. Uh, Iraq fell in front of our eyes. Syria, Yemen, uh, Egypt, you know, Pakistan, one by one by one. And we didn't understand what was wrong. Every after every three four years, this happens in Palestine, and then we, are uh, we get together and we do some research, and then halas oh, uh, buy card Israeli products, and read this and this and this. So for kids, we need to teach them the companions in a fun way, which where you you enjoy and understand it too. You're doing homeschooling, so. Um, I'm, I'm quickly going to tell you how I planned my classes. When I teach Sira, if I'm teaching a seven-year-old Sira, I look at the Sira with their eyes. And at the same time, I look at the Sira, what they're going to be thinking when they're teenagers. So for 30-minute classes, I was, I was uh, doing research for six hours because I was home. I wasn't working. I was crying. I was smiling. Sometimes I would stand up and dance. When I, re I was doing research on those, com those companions, it gave me pride. It gave me hope. So you are, are home. You can do that together. And don't forget to search the social media 
with the kind of questions that they are going to ask. So you should know when they go on social media and they search the questions, what answers they are going to get. Because when you're teaching them, <clears throat> sorry, when you're teaching them about the Sira and the history, then those questions, they should know the answers from you, not from the social media. So Nazifa, we are adult and whatever trauma we were supposed to go through, we have already gone through that. We have gone through enough. Now, what is left, right? Assalamualaikum. <laughs> oh, sorry, yes. it finished. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, sister. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> And this question may be going off a tangent, but it, I think it's one that is discussed in many, many Muslim households. The double standards that we see with countries like Saudi Arabia mm. and her bombing Yemen, mm. and yet they are standing by and doing nothing for the Palestinians. And Saudi Arabia is obviously the, the place where we will go to do Hajj and Umrah, holiest place for all of us on this planet, yet... The two just do not sit side by side, if you see what I mean. And it's very hard to explain that, I think, to any child of it's any not age. Um, it's not hard. It's not hard. Look, I'm sorry I'm cutting you off because I want. I think I got your question and I want to move on fast. Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't have a map of uh, Saudi Arabia and I don't know how to draw. This is Saudi Arabia. There is Iran. Um, all uh, this is surrounded by Al Shias, right? Yes, our kids should. Uh, it's embarrassing, but they should know that we have Shias and Sunni problem. It it is surrounded by Shias from every side, and they they are closing up on him. They can attack on him together, and they can. And the the uh, MBS, all he is trying to do was, or even before Sauds, to save their country, like everybody else, because we don't have one passport, right? We are not one Ummah. They need to know that we broke it and we didn't do anything to be one ummah. We are not one ummah. And they, there is where we have to start that we uh, don't have this unity. You know how we teach them equal rights and this and that. Everything is brainwashed. They're brainwashed so nicely, like put them in the bleach and take them out. They, We need to tell them this. We need to tell them these things too. That as an ummah, uh, we we are not one and that is the trick that shaitan played because when we are together then shaitan will not be able to enter our houses then the jal will not be able to take over us so my child that's why it's very important that you and your siblings stick together does not matter who comes to your into your lives does not matter who are your wives or husbands does not matter who is rich or poor from you you my my children will be not make the mistake that we made as an ummah, right? So now when MBS was only, or whatever, who they were trying to save their, he, he, he made one statement, sister, once. He said that from very, uh, from lots of evil, I chose the least evil when I attacked Yemen. Obviously, I'm not saying that he did the right thing. Please, okay? But, I, I, and I'm not in, I have a lot of Shia friends. I'm not very strict about Shia Sunni think i'm not i don't even know what she has believe on anyways like what's the difference i don't want to waste my time on that maybe i have information i deleted it my brain doesn't have that much space Khair. so then us he asked us to help so us went and us said okay we will leave our forces there right and for that you will have to sell your oil in our money and you we know what uh, oil money and you need to know all those things that why, why U.S. Uh, and every time they don't listen to U.S., every time they don't listen to U.S., they threaten them, we'll remove our army. And the minute they remove their armies, they are going to. Now, alhamdulillah, they have these uh, good trumps with Iran. The, the, the day that Muslims unite, we won't have all those problems. So I, I, I'm sorry I cut you off, but is there something else you want to add? <laughs> I was too excited. Go ahead, sister. No? I'm sorry, can I ask, at what age would you address the issue of, like, what's the order of addressing the issue of, like, the jad with a child? Like, my seven years old now. 
my seven, eight, nine, ten years old class, they know about the child. They're memorizing the Quran. They know they learn um they learn the surahs. So Surah Al Kaha for they know because I don't want them to be scared. I want them to be strong. So in a, you will put them in a way, uh, uh, put the information out in a way. Suppose we are doing Surah Al-Mulk. I was, you know, first time, because of some students in my class, I was afraid that uh, if I tell them about, because I didn't, I don't tell them about hell uh, in my youngest class. We don't talk about Jahannam at all. I don't even talk about Shaitan, but, but now we are doing the translation of the Salah with the four, five years old, so we quickly brushed on Auzubillah Ibn Shaitan Rajim. But uh, mm -hmm. for the seven, eight, nine, ten years old, yes, uh, we did Surah, uh, we are doing uh, the Surah Al-Mulk and it talks about hell. Uh, so I talked to them in the beginning, this is not for you, you are a sabiqun, but this is here for you so that you can save others from this. In, instead of going into trauma and acting like babies, so they don't well, I, well, like that word, right? I am not a baby. I don't act like baby. And at the same time, because they're doing Sira and they know the companions, they want to be like them. So this is how you're going to balance it out. Okay. okay. I, I feel bad, this sister I cut off. Is she here? Are you here, sister? Yes, I heard you. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, yes, I'm here, sister. Thank you. Thank you very much for that explanation. And uh, again, it's a lovely history lesson. I wasn't aware about the um, history behind the threats that Saudi faced. Um, and, and now I know why, um, why he attacked Yemen. Although, like you, like you I, I don't think it's a best, the best move. Mm -hmm. um, but there is an explanation behind it and, and also the influence that uh, the United States have placed on Saudi mm -hmm. as well. And I did know about the oil money. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's <laughs> obscene. I don't know if that's the word to use in, in the very at the very least, the way that the Middle East countries are played like pawns by the United States and everything else. But I, I did watch a, um, a C-SPAN. Mm. Uh, news item on Biden when he was very when he's much younger and he actually came out and said if Iran hadn't been created by the you know, if, sorry not Iran if Israel had not been created by the British we mm. would have to have created Israel in order to safeguard mm. our interests in that region See, lives don't matter yeah the, the world war happened because of this they, they, that thing. Oh, we have seen nine one one, right? You have seen it. In our, it happen? We seen the nine one one. Nine eleven. Yeah. Nine eleven. We, we have seen it, right? Yeah. And we know what happened, right? Mm hmm. Whatever is happening, this is how it's happening. Now you think. What about, do you mean by that, sister? I don't want to say too much. You can think okay. about. You can think about this later. That whatever is happening is the same formula. It's the same formula. I see what you mean. It's the same. The same story being repeated again and again. Yes. And again. Yeah. Whatever is happening in Gaza, whatever is happening, wherever is happening, this is what how it's happening. Mm. There is a bigger. This is how World War happened. There is a bigger. The the eyes is on the prize, and then yeah. there it's planned yes. and it's. So, unfortunately, no. but whenever this is for all of us, whenever we are talking about this, st let's stop blaming the Arabs. Let's stop blaming the regimes. Let's stop take responsibility. It's my fault. It's my dad's fault. It's my mom's fault. It's our fault because Allah SWT tells us that I will put the leaders on you. Who? Uh, what is the the phrase I repeat it so much in Urdu that I don't even know how to say it in English. That you will have the the hukmaran, you will have the leaders, wherever you are. They don't come from Mars. Our leaders are from us. This is us. Whatever we do, that those kind of leaders will be put on our heads. They are the result Every of nation our actions. Leader. They are results of our actions. 
Yes, think of one family as one unit of the Ummah. Yes, Samra, you're right. So sister, sister, what I get out of this is that, you know, everybody sitting at home, we are all reading news, we're looking at social media, so many posts, and we all are questioning that what can we do to, to help or to contribute or, you know, so I think what our part is uh, that, you know, Allah has given us um, kids and that we can t make them like, you know, we can guide them, we can uh, like, you know, guide them in the right direction instead of just protecting themselves and, you know, just being okay, lunch, dinner, you know, we have to train them, we have to make them confident, and we have to teach them about what real Islam is so that when they grow up, they are confident Muslims and, you know, and in, and not instill them about all the maslak or this or that, you know, make them just Muslim, like pure Muslim and make them understand Allah and his Rasul and the Sahabas and the history so that they become more confident with and they have the knowledge when they go out in public, when they are being questioned or mm. so they can answer confidently that what yes. Islam is and what Allah is. Yes, and we have uh, five pillars is only the pillars. We have to put the building on. We mm. have to put the roof on now. Right, and we as mothers sitting at home, that's what we can do the and best that, right at this point. Yes, yeah. and to put this, this you don't have knowledge. You will not mm. give knowledge how to put the roof on because you don't have roof on. How are you right. going to put the roof on for them? For that, you need knowledge. So as Naz said, mm. in knowledge. And what knowledge we need? Not just the knowledge of the Quran. Yes, mm. Quran. And you know what? Subhanallah. Uh, it, again, it's my fault. I should. The way that you are actually supposed to read Quran, if you read Quran, you'll have whole history. You'll understand mm. what's mm. happening, why it's happening. If you read the history, if you read Bani, Surah, uh, Surah Israel, Surah Ben Israel, you will understand the same pattern, the same pattern is being um, repeated. We have read it so many times, but the thing is, we never we never took that time or that effort to understand exactly what, what it's, it's behind, you know, what it means and how to apply, basically. That's our yeah. weakness. So, uh, at least, uh, order some history books and start mm. reading those, at least. Yes, Rabia? We still have uh, to talk about teens, guys. We still have to talk about teens. Hurry up. Yes, yes, Rabia. I just want to add that you just uh, uh, related the, the historic events in Sunnah and that, that they are repeating. So I uh, I too found it like uh, in the uh, news uh, currently. Like uh, the Arabs, as for the news says, as uh, what they, uh, you know, claim, uh, what they what they actually you know say is something uh, something different and what uh, the facts over there as, as I wish we see in uh, KSA right now is that they don't actually believe in themselves in their military forces so uh, they are uh, uh, quite dependent on uh, America and they are uh, you know obliged to do it and it, we I uh, don't see I, I don't I, th I don't think we should see them as uh, uh, you know the uh, Bad guys. Uh, the first first line army or something like that we shouldn't see them as leading the muslim ummah i don't yes. think we should uh, look why for your husband as is for not the history leading, right? why your son is why your husband is not leading why my husband is not leading why my son is not leading my husband yeah, goes to because, many... because my, i i am not actually uh, you know uh, practicing sunnah and mm -hmm. i have not transferred those uh, attributes or you know the the, um, uh, the sun the sunna attributes we are not practicing those around us so mm -hmm. kids and the other people they don't have uh, anything to you know uh, uh, you know experience in mm -hmm. their homes so mm -hmm. we don't uh, nurture such men the little men are not actually becoming men as actually, they should our be. next topic and, let's do that on that i'm really really agree this is this is what is so true that we don't have men Right? Yes, we don't. And we are not we, yes, we have stopped making money. Yes. Let's talk about teens quickly before uh, it's too late. Teens is, when your child is teen, and I am so upset about this all the time, but I don't say it loud because I don't want to offend you guys. I, most of the time, I hate my teens' parents. Not hate is too strong. I don't like them. Why? There's an action that I don't like about them, obviously. And that is now you want to fix them? 
Now is the time when they are your advisor. You know what Shura is, right? Do Shura with your teens. Talk to your teens. You want to buy a car? Ask them. At the end of the day, you know, if they want you to buy, go Lamborghini, you can buy that crappy Honda broken car. That's fine. This is what you can afford. You're not going to go and take loan because your teenager said you should buy um, Tesla. But involve them in decision making. Ask them. I'm going to buy this property. What do you guys think? Let's go see. You tell me what should I do? I want you to tell me what should I do. Use that sentence and again and again. I need your help. I need you to take take control. I need you to, to guide us. Say this again and again. I know you guys know so much. I tell them all the time. I tell my students, I don't know anything. You know, you tell me. But because they're not given that confidence at home, they don't believe on me when I tell them. Well, lately, last this badge is still not believing on me for some reason. And I talk to you guys and don't stop talking to me after what I say now that you are now spying on them and you are now yelling at them and you are now telling them that to do this and that when you were supposed to be doing that in the last era, last five years. Now they are teens. Now they are your vizier. So get, give them so much importance as much as a king gives importance to their wazir. Okay. And now we will talk about adult because after teen, they are adult. And now we are more strict, right? Think about your, your husband and your son. Give me example. Tell me how usually the fathers are dealing with the adult sons in our culture. They don't deal it at all. <laughs> they don't even, they don't, yeah, they stop talking. Let them be independent. Friends, now you don't need to give them advice. Whatever you did here in this age, five to 10, now this is this is what you're going to reap okay this this whatever you did here now this is what you're going to get if you are getting a very disrespectful unorganized dirty child which you it's a child for you unfortunately that's another thing my child is always a child that this is what you did don't be angry why are you angry at them this is what you saw this is the time when it was time to sow seeds. You sowed uh, broccoli and you were expecting mangoes. So now the whatever friend you build for yourself, that is a friend for you. But in any case, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect, even if they are taking drugs, you have to be their friend now. Now it is time to be friends. That's it. Independent. Let them make their own decisions. Let them make mistakes. Let them waste money. Whatever money they're making themselves, let them do. They will learn this way. You cannot protect them. You can, you're can. you not going to be there forever. If you were listening to them there, if you were spending time with them there, they're going to come and talk to you now. They're going to come and spend time with you now. But if you were busy there with your own phone, they're busy with their own phone now. If you didn't teach them this, the history of Islam, if you didn't, did not teach them the... Uh, here, see how we said we need knowledge. When they are learning, learn with them. Plan the lesson for them. If you're not here, if you are here in Sunnah Ken, attend the classes with them. I know, mashallah, the best students, their mothers are listening to the recordings if they are not present at the time. And that's why I love this class. This is my always my most favorite age. And Aisha knows that when I'm going to teach teens, gosh, like I'm kind of, you know, these days I don't know why. I I don't, I'm not fully into this for some reason. Because of the students or I don't know, parents maybe. <laughs> but uh, here, and you know why? This is why when they grow up, they come back to me. You know the system in Sunak Camp. If you are Sunak Camp, you know the pattern. You know they come back, right? Have you seen them coming back? Anyone here? They do. You see Sohail, you see Amber, you see. They come back here because I was there for them there. 
and they're not talking to you, then it's your mistake. Okay? If you are a parent and you did not follow the first four, four steps, the first, um, these, these steps, then you cannot expect to write the fruits. You're not going to have, you just have bushes. You don't have anything. I'm sorry. Don't cry for Jerusalem. Those are crocodile tears. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. And you want MBS to go fight for you? Right? You want Iran to go and fix it? You didn't do your job. You are as part of this problem as much anyone else is. If you didn't do your job. Why do we have our own home? House? My husband will never buy a house. So tell them why you don't have a house. You know, it's a mortgage. Kids uh, in my class, these, uh, these six, seven, these, these kids, they know about riba. Tell them if they are older, if they're younger, tell them it's Allah's order that you collect money and buy. So we are saving money. Yeah, trap tickets go. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something. Uh, you know, the teenagers that they sometimes I talk to them alone, uh, separately without you two, right? Or if they have their phone, we uh, text each other. And I'm going to tell you the scary news that some of the teens, when I ask them, what is your goal? Teens, I'm talking 14, 15 years old. They say, my goal is to save money so I can leave the house. They want to leave you when they were supposed to be taking control of the house, when they were supposed to be thinking they are the vizier of this house. There no decision can be made without you are taking their phones away and you're yelling at them and you're locking them up and you think that uh, you will fix the problem. The minute that they can, they are going to, this is their plan that they're going to leave you. If you did work hard here, they will stay. Yes, Arya. <laughs> Arya. Um, what you're saying about that uh, we didn't do our job, the ones who feel like they haven't done their job. Um, it is sometimes it's uh, parents really want the best for the children, but they don't know how to do it. Arya, you, um, did, you did your job. You did good. But right now, let me say it loud. You're not doing this. You loved doing this. <clears throat> you loved doing this so much. You're not ready to move on. If you're talking about yourself. If you're talking about yeah. somebody else. You, because no, we're talking about them. You're talking about yourself. We love, who doesn't love slaves? I mean, come on, right? We slaved them. We were supposed to slave them here. Now it's time to move on, and you're not ready to move on. It's not his fault. Well, well, it's not to make them slaves, but it's more like you, um, you get this uh, overprotecting, um, feeling like you you want to just protect them from everything. That's the that's the case that uh, I have to work on. You're not confident enough. You didn't do good when he was this young. I think you did. Um, well, it's more like my waswasa that uh, okay. with all the things happening Aria. around. Aria. Okay, let's, okay. let's for a minute, let's think you are the worst mother. You didn't do anything. Still, it's not time to do what you want to do. Time is gone. Mm. You cannot make him five years old again. He's gone. Mm -hmm. Go make dua. Leave him alone. Yeah. Leave him alone. I'm begging you. And I beg you again and again, and you're not listening to me. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm working on it. <laughs> Leave him alone. That's why, you know, when younger kids come, when the kids come for, people come for admission, and I tell them, when you, your child is young, give them to me. Don't come to me when they're 14 years old. He was here. I have no yeah. fear. Why are you so Shura uh, means, uh, Shura is from advice. Mashura, you know, Vizir, what is Vizir? In English, mm -hmm. what is I know what's with this. <laughs> oh, I know, but I have to translate. Minister, 
advisor, counsel. Yes, thank mm -hmm. you, Nafisa. Counsel, advisor. He's your consultant. Do you, Arya, I have a question. Do you treat him like your consultant? Sometimes, yeah. You have to do that all the but time. But mostly, mostly lectures. <laughs> yes, time, time is gone. No lectures. No lectures. You're going to lose them. Yeah. This is how, guys, um, I, I never say that because when I am talking to you individually and I, if I say this, you're not going to understand. But when they are teens, you're losing them. You worked hard, mm. trust yourself. If you didn't work hard, so sorry. Make dua. It's not time to work hard. Mm. Okay, let's move on. Inshallah. Ignorance is the reason. We, 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 find, we find out the solutions. What is the reason? Reason is ignorance. Mother is the real role model for boy and a girl when they are young. 90% impact is uh, uh, whatever your child is getting, your mother, mother is impact, impacting it 90%. Means that mother has to play a role and that is what 90%. And I'm talking about zero, zero to zero to even, you know, old age. Our mothers are still a very important part. So get attached with the Quran. Okay. Um, and that is it. I hope makes sense. Instead of going to, you know, Shait, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you see the Qiyamah coming, if you see it coming towards you from the sky, do you have a sapling in your hand? Plant it. Yes, as an Ummah, we are suffering big time. Yes, we know that the worst time are coming. It's not going to get better yet. Yes. But we have saplings in our hands and we can grow them because this is the order of Muhammad. So please let's work with them. Um, inshallah, I am here for you. I am trying my best and I need you to be playing your role now. So inshallah, um, if there are any questions, you can quickly ask me. Yes, go, go Rabia. Uh, I just um, it crossed my mind a long, a long ago that as parent and as a guardian or, uh, you know, as an individual too, I feel the psychology is, uh, uh, you know, compulsory to read psychology, understand psychology, human psychology is uh, totally compulsory on us because it's always, uh, you know, we are versus shaitan, not we versus we. So, uh, you know, he plays with our psychology. So we should actually, uh, you know, be very much, um, uh, you know, gripping our uh, tools. So uh, in order for, you know, justifying my uh, uh, thoughts I went uh, reading it and, and then I uh, uh, ended up in reading child psychology still uh, I feel that uh, I need a lot of guidance because I'm not uh, this is not my field so uh, can, can you just guide me where should I uh, ask put up my questions re related to this nafs versus fitra uh, chart that we see in many books and uh, uh, to uh, actually the, the goal is to actually understand the main uh, needs which a human uh, human child cannot forego uh, at a particular age so we can you know uh, pre-plan everything for them uh, can you just guide me of some uh, authentic sources for understanding uh, this particular part the nerves versus fitra part i didn't do a lot of research on it and honestly when i am teaching I, how I learn is, I mean, obviously I did the tafsir of the Quran, alhamdulillah, and I, but most of the time, what I learn is when I'm teaching kids. So we did work on the soul a lot because there is, there is um, nafsul mutmainna, right? There are nafs, three kind of nafs, and we did work on it. So yes. my seven, eight, nine years old, they can talk about this better than me, alhamdulillah. Um, but nafs and fitra, we will have to find the ayahs from the Quran and the, all the research starts from there. And I believe there are. So I will have to look into it. You are in the WhatsApp group? Yes, right? I am. In. You guys have Asha Harris's number. If not, can please somebody post Asha Harris's number. Any questions that you have later or uh, some some someone asked another question about the four-year-old. 
please send all those texts to Aisha Harris because um, um, I'm going to lose your text. I think Aisha is not here. So Fatma or Zainab, somebody post Aisha Harris's number. And Robert, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. Send your text there. I mean, send your text with the question. I don't want to answer that without uh, having authentic resources. Okay. And but I'll get back to you. Okay. Aisha, honey, Aisha, give your number and Rabia and uh, K. K texted me. K, are you still here? Yes. K, please uh, text Aisha Harris on WhatsApp. Any other? Can questions? I quickly answer if you don't mind, sister? Yes, 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 please. My understanding, I'm not sure if it's like really hundred percent. Uh, according to Quran or Hadith, but whatever my understanding is growing, growing up and learning is that uh, um, our uh, fitra is like everybody has that fitra which is on Islam. So that's why they say that when we say that non-Muslim cannot go to Jannah, this is not on some con con consent is right because if they haven't got the message of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, or the Jesus Christ or the Moses, which is like impossible in today's uh, time. But for some reason, if they haven't got the message about prophets, but whatever fitra they are in them, they will be on question according to that. And um, if their fitra is aligned, but uh, they did action in this world, they will go to Janda. And our nafs is that which uh, makes us away from our fitna, uh, for our uh, fitra. So everybody has good and bad fitra and religion, Islam is within our fitra, whether we are Muslims or non-Muslims. Like even non-Muslims, they know what is good and what is bad, but they try to stay away from fitra and do the bad thing because, because of their nafs. So... Uh, I feel that uh, fitra, everybody is on fitra. That's why they say when a child born, he's born on fitra. Fitra is Islam. But nafs is which deviates us from our real fitra. Uh, fitra. So that's why the hasad and jealousy makes us away. That's why Jewish did. They knew that prophet is the real prophet. Their fitra was giving shahada 100%, but they stay away from it because of the shaitan. Their nafs make them deviate. So that's the like, kind of basic uh, knowledge about it. But there is uh, lots of uh, um, reasoning in Quran and Hadith, I'm sure, about that. I hope it's answered the question. Inshallah, it, uh, it does. And Inshallah, se still send the question. I'll give you a detailed answer. Uh, this is what when we did the three kind of nafs, uh, we used this some something like that. Obviously, we make presentations. and But... Uh, the, for the kids to understand it's Rabia obviously it's uh, you need more information inshallah and I'll get that to you but uh, how shaitan and nafs work together because nafs is a tool which makes you your body do things wrong and which affects the soul and then if soul doesn't want to do wrong things soul is pure soul any soul even if it's the bully the soul doesn't feel good so shaitan doesn't shaitan cannot make your body directly do anything wrong Shaitan doesn't have control on the body. Shaitan goes through nafs. And then the nafs tells you to do this. So you know how I want to not, I, do, I don't want to pray. I don't, I want to lie. That's me. And that's I is the nafs. But inshallah, I'll get you detail. Uh, this is what our, we taught our kids. This is our, uh, alhamdulillah, our um, slave group. <laughs> I should name them something else. This group. No, I, I just came up with that terminology yesterday. That how... They have to twenty four seven follow the uh, the schedules. They have to do all those things and work hard. And you know, so I just wanted to quickly mention something which um, sister you helped me with mm -hmm. uh, with my teenager was that I think parents should stop being in denial. Um, they should really open their eyes, ears. Yeah. body everything and just understand what their child really is saying to them and telling them and not what they want to do not what they want to see their eyes through not what they want to see their child at what level to you need to come down at the level of your child whatever age they are and and see it through their eyes and understand what they want because I myself as a parent was in denial and I think that um, I wasn't understanding my child from his age 
from his feelings. And now that I am doing that, everything's becoming easier. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I see that I work in a nursery and at the, at the time we, uh, as teachers, we, you know, uh, I work with three, four-year-olds and we, at that time it's very early, but some children are diagnosed with certain <clears throat> conditions and I see it day in, day out that the parents are just in denial. They just say, no, mm. what you're saying is wrong. Mm. We can see all the signs. We've been trained in all the signs. Oh, we're not doctors to diagnose, but we are the first point of referral to psychologists or to other people. And it's really heartbreaking that that child needs support and help. The child, but the parents are in denial. Um, so just get to know your child and come down to their level and think what they are thinking. I think that's one of the most important things that my eyes have been open to through some of my camp. And I think it's really, really helpful because it's uh, something we get, we can get so much lost in how we want them to be or which level we want them to be at or where we want to see them. It's not like that. I'm going to lost. Sorry. When it is time, when it is time, the, 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 that's why I say you're blessed if your child is young. You still have time. When it is time, then uh, that's great. Do what you're supposed to be doing if they're in that age group. But if they have grown up, then please stop. Now you are just making it worse. You didn't do your work when you were supposed to do and now you're making it worse. So stop. Uh, I'm sending Aisha Aris's number again. Hazifa did send it, please, uh, before. Jazakallah khair. I'm sending it again. Mm. Inshallah, we next uh, we should meet once a month. And uh, our next, uh, I think I'm thinking about next time we talk about manhood, cats versus lion. How oh, instead of, you know, but... Uh, I think we should talk about that, but if there is something else, then. Uh, Sister um, Zakia, could I just ask you, if you wouldn't mind just rounding up this conversation from what you were saying at the beginning, the middle, the end, just kind of giving us a conclusion of what this, how this meeting ends in a way, because we've covered, I think we've covered a lot of things, which is absolutely wonderful. And I know you've mentioned a lot of things about how, um, you know, there are signs um, that we have to be, uh, we should take care to, to to see them, to view them, to know them, what they are, especially given what's happening mm -hmm. in, in Israel, Gaza, etc. And I, from what I gathered from the conversation, there's a lot of us who are not really that clued up on this sort of thing, but also, you know, the the... The history of Islam as well. So, if you wouldn't mind, I'd, I'd really appreciate it. Um, would you just conclude this uh, this meeting? I'll try. Thank you. Usually, my students conclude the meetings for me. So, <laughs> I missed some of it at the beginning. So it's um, yeah. So we I'm we started with that the word is in the hands of the. Um, people who have mental illnesses there's no doubt about that the leaders uh, especially uh, the strong ones uh, the the example we have is joe biden, joe biden and then we if you look closely you will find many and the the situation right now is in the world not one not two not three the fitnas are coming just falling upon us um there is a hadith that uh, a time will come and subhanallah, yesterday somebody said that to me and I had goosebumps that the, the time will come that the person walking in the street will say that the one who are in the grave, they are better than me. I wish I was dead because it is so hard to bear this. And you know who said that? She's a Christian. And she was talking about these days, what is, whatever is happening in the world. And she said that I wish I was dead. And I said, oh, my God. So anyways, no, we... Um, Things will not stop here. We all agree about that. It will get worse. Uh, going into depressions is not the solution. We have to do something. We have to tell our kids what's happening in a way that they man up. We are the we we are inheriting the legacies of uh, 
words are named Lubaba, Lubaba to Kubra Razilatala and Hain, Khadija Razilatala and Hain, Fatma Razilatala and Hain. We all adore their names and we are so happy, but what do we know, know about them? And how are we going to go stand and say that, yes, we were the followers of these, we were the children of these? So they were brave. You know who killed uh, Abu Lahab? You should do some research and find out how Abu Lahab died. I'm not going to tell you. Okay, so the solution Prophet Muhammad gave us, and the solution is in the Quran. We have the eyes of the body and eyes of the soul. The eyes of the bodies are looking and they don't understand anything because eyes of the slow souls don't have light. They cannot see. The light is Quran, Nur. Quran is the Nur. We need to learn the, uh, the Quran and uh, um, uh, we will not be believing on all the news because news is only what they want you to see. It doesn't matter if it's coming from in Gaza, out Gaza. It's coming from anywhere. They want you to see that news. That's why you have that news. If it is true or not true, you have that because they want you to see that. And the solution is the nur and dua. The, the, it is too late for dawa. We As an ummah, it is time that we save ourselves individually. The time is gone. And for that, we will follow some of the, um, the, the advices from the Quran. And that is, that's why we divided our children's ages. First of all, we have to add fathers back into the equation. Inshallah, that's why next class, or no, I shouldn't call it class. Next time we will talk about this and how we can add the fathers back. But uh, yeah, let's, let's hold that thought for next time. But uh, we need to have the ideal fathers and we need to become the ideal moms. And the ideal mom is not only the one who is serving their kids all the time and husbands and keeping the house clean. Ideal mom is who looks nice, smells nice, smiles, and who is active. Kids love that. Um, preparation, when we come to preparation, what should we do? When your child is young, zero to five years old, inshallah, we will keep them close. We will attach Allah, Allah, Allah in every sentence and we will treat them as kings. They are kings. We'll spoil them. We'll love them. All the love in the world. And then when they are five to ten years old, then we give them strict guidance and uh, uh, strict uh, schedules. Uh, that doesn't mean that you start beating them like a slave. Remember that, okay? And then when they're teenagers, they're your vizier, they're your advisor, they're your cons You consult with them. You will make the last decision without them knowing. Make them feel they are the one who are making decisions. Imagine if you, they think that you cannot survive without them in that age. If they think they, oh, my mom is so vulnerable, she needs my help. They will love it. They won't be planning to leave you. They want to leave you because you are annoying. And then when they are after teens, they are independent. Please don't try to fix that. It is too late. Deal with it. You grew this. You made this. Now you have to make dua. And you have to tell them you are always there. You tell them wherever I am, that is your home. You win or lose in your life, I will be here. I will be here for you. And that's what they need to learn. That will give them confidence. They don't, They how many of them are living with their uncles, Mamu and Chachu and uh, Khala and Popo, and they're gone. They are alone already. Please, when they're adult, don't deprive them of yourself. Don't be angry with them. Talk to your husband. Bring him on board. Stop pushing them away. They are already alone. Look at that. They're looking at this. They are confused. They are worried. They try to change their names. But they're still going to be haunted because they're Muslim. They need you. Tell them, I love you. I'm proud of you. They don't, they don't have a job. They're failing the schools. Tell them, I love you. And I'm here for you. And I will always be as long as I am alive. But you are my man. You are grown up. Inshallah, we will do one session on the girls too. Because they are manning up and that's dangerous in another way. Keep all the children in your du'as. My children too. Assalamu alaikum.